Hey everybody, John Pluskina here. Well, I promised to read Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine's new book and get drunk and tell you about it. And I did. <laughs> Delir Delirium Tremens is my Belgian beer of choice for this evening. And this video may well degenerate into a total clusterfuck. But as always, I'm coming to you amidst fragrant billowing clouds of aromatic pipe tobacco smoke to maximize our triggering potential. Well, I thought that I knew what I was getting into when I signed up for this, but uh, it's worse than I expected. Let's start with the cover art. I can't believe how bad the cover art is. And I'll, I'll put the, the, a picture of the cover in the title card for the episode so that you can see. And now here we go. I'm struggling to get my iPad turned on. So I can look at the cover. Oh, look at that. If I, if I hired a college kid to make a book cover for me on Fiverr, and I paid the base price with no extras and they sent me this back in return, I would send it back and ask for alterations because it looks so lazy and terrible. They clearly, um, they magic wand tooled the background out of these, this picture of, of Hillary and Tim Kaine together. And there's no background, there's no texture, there's no shadow, there's no light, there's no composition. It's the most slapdash piece of shit cover I've seen on a political book in a long time. And political books really are not, um, you know, they're not known. Uh, they, they don't typically hire Salvador Dali or, or um, you know, and that's, that's who comes to mind when I think of fine art is Salvador Dali, apparently. But they, they don't hire master craftsmen to come up with political books, but this is, this is ridiculous. This is silly. <laughs> but, uh, so, and the, that, um, if I had to pick one word to describe the cover, I guess I would go with lazy. And then, um, I think that it is safe to say that we can apply that to the book itself. This is one case where you can definitely judge the book by its cover. I think we can all agree to that. So let's see. Um, so my original plan for this video right now was I was going to read the introductory crap and the first chapter. But I didn't make it through the entire first chapter. So this video is just going to be the preface and the foreword. And you'll see why this is so difficult. And really, I've, I've carved out a difficult job for myself. This is like volunteering to go be a, a crocodile dentist. Uh, this is, this is, I deserve hazard pay, and if you haven't subscribed yet, um, please do so. So, this is the preface, and I don't know who wrote it, which is unfortunate. It, it, it uses we, so I guess it's both of them speaking, although I, I guess, does anybody think that Hillary Clinton or Tim Kaine wrote even one word of this? Do you think they even talked to whoever wrote this? It, to me, this book seems as if it was probably written by interns. <laughs> um, or maybe it's more like... Maybe it's more like they took as many political cliches as they could come up with. A bunch of people sat in a room and just thought of every cliche that's ever been uttered in American politics and put it all into a database and then created an artificial intelligence that would randomize strings of political cliches from the database and then organize them into some uh into some form that it uh it w it does technically make grammatical sense in english but it it um somehow conveys no meaning or passion or soul uh yeah in fact i feel like i could Stop right there. I feel like that sums it up pretty much. But I guess you wouldn't let me get away from, with that. So the preface... I'll read you a little bit of the preface and you'll understand what I mean. 
People who are running to lead the United States of America should tell you what they're going to do, why they're going to do it, and how they're going to get it done. That's the first sentence in the book. Now, the first rule of writing, and uh, I'm a novelist. Uh, I, I have a novel and a novella that are available for purchase on Amazon.com. Uh, the first sentence of a book is supposed to be the most captivating, the most intriguing sentence possible, because what you want to do is grab the reader and pull them into the world of your book. And that applies to not, not just fiction, but nonfiction, too. Um, you, language is the, is the medium of exchange when you're reading. And uh, if you can't, you don't necessarily have to be artistic with language, especially in something like a political book, which is, uh, you know, it's, it, people aren't reading this to, for enlightenment. They just want to get a more in-depth look at what the candidates stand for, I guess. If anybody, people don't really read this, do they? Like, do people actually buy books like this and read them? I know that this book isn't selling well. But, um... So anyway, the whole book reads like that, and it's it's miserable. Reading this is a, absolutely a miserable experience, and I'm only about, I mean, not even ten pages into it, really. Um, but don't worry, I'm gonna keep at it. Um, so this video is just gonna be the preface and the... and the foreword, and then the next video will be chapter one. But that's gonna have to wait until next time because the it, this was already too much it really was hold on i need a drink um so i'm not uh, i haven't prepared any remarks other than um i just went uh, i read the book and i highlighted some passages um, oh, the, the preface ends with, This is our blueprint for building an America where we are stronger together. And be ready for that. You're going to see a lot of callbacks to the title like that. That's only the first of many. And then there's a, a creepy looking picture of um, Hillary and, and uh, Kane looking off camera. And uh, that brings us into the actual foreword. And this also is not credited so i don't know if this is supposed to be hillary or kane talking and uh it's it's the it uses we again so i'll tell you what i'm gonna do is imagine that it's them talking eerily together in unison <laughs> like the little girl go twin ghosts in the shining <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> Uh, I had to, I had to stop the, the, the recording for a little bit and just chuckle at that for a while. That's a funny image. <laughs> I'm going to try and keep my composure. Um, all right. So the forward continues in that vein. It, it says, it has been said that America is great because America is good. And we agree 240 years ago, representatives of 13 colonies met in Philadelphia. We all know the story, but we usually focus our attention on how it turned out. So it recaps the, the revolution, the American Revolution, which is mind-boggling to me. I, it's, I'm surprising that Hillary is willing to bring up that imagery, because if you imagine how quickly the Founding Fathers would have revolted against Queen Hillary... It's kind of amazing. I, I wouldn't bring the Founding Fathers into any kind of conversation if I was Hillary Clinton. But it goes, so it goes through that briefly and, and filled with cliches and really cheesy lines like this one. When they, met, when they met in Philadelphia, some wanted to stick with the king and some wanted to stick it to the king. Uh, so here's the, my first hypothesis about this book is that I don't believe it was edited at all by anybody. So I, I think it's not necessarily impossible that I'm the first person to ever read this book. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not usually the kind of asshole to just sit and laugh at my own jokes like that. It's just, this whole situation is so funny to me. Uh, I can't believe that we've come to this. It, it, this election is one of those situations where you, the, really the only choice is you can either laugh about it or cry about it and i'm gonna choose laugh every single time that choice comes up and so you're gonna hear me laugh a lot before this series is over and by the time they left philadelphia they had planted the seed that would grow into a mighty nation oh my god 
they began to see themselves as one people, stronger together. And another throwback to the title. So I'm already sick. It's like a running gag that isn't funny the first time, but then gets less funny each time instead of getting funnier like a running gag should. There's, I think there's three callbacks to the title in the foreword and in the, and in the preface together. And that's, together, that's maybe four or five pages. Maybe. Um, but that's hilarious. And so I wonder if that's a blatant attempt to, to just get the word count up, or, again, I, I don't, th I just, I think the problem is it was just never edited. It, it really does read like a first draft by a writer who doesn't care and is just trying to pump it out and, um, and but but has really good grammar. I haven't noticed a ton of grammatical mistakes or spelling errors yet, although it's early on. Um, and so it would be funny if, as we go on reading the book, it gets increasingly erratic. So at the beginning, it's relatively held together like this, but then as the as the cocaine and coffee fueled evening ran on, it just starts to become incoherent. And so it becomes at the end experimental and bizarre, like a like a German impressionist film. I don't think that'll happen, but I'm I'm going to keep my eye open for that because you never know. Too many politicians in Washington and in state houses are more beholden to special interests than they are to the best interests of their constituents. Okay, Hillary, um, if you say so. Our communities have seen horrific mass shootings. We and our allies have come under attack by terrorists, and our long, difficult struggle with racism is still ongoing, with race too often playing a role in who gets ahead and who gets left behind. And if the first black president couldn't straighten out race relations in the United States, but Hillary Clinton's going to do it. Um, this is hilarious, because Hillary Clinton can't run as a reform candidate. Hillary Clinton is the most establishment politician who ever established and the way that this reads towards the end is she's listing all these horrible problems in american society is as if she has been a powerless figure who has not been near the levers and mechanizations of the united states government and it just isn't fucking so um she played an enormous part in the obama administration and every single one of these problems that she lists here was either created by or exacerbated by the Obama administration. Um, there is no case for Hillary Clinton presidency, none whatsoever. Uh, she has no credibility. She has been verifiably proven by objective fact to be a liar and a criminal who isn't being prosecuted um, only out of the corruption. Only because the our government is um, is not functioning properly right now. We are supposed to be equal under the law, and it isn't so. There are people who can flagrantly break the law to enrich themselves in ways that are incredibly destructive to other human beings, and they are not punished. And that's not right. And uh, so this book. Like, it's funny, but it's also depressing. But uh, I'm going to soldier through it. And so that is what I had to say just from the first couple of pages. And I have no idea how dark and brutal this is going to get before we get through the whole book. But we're going to do it. And if we hit 100 subscribers by Friday, I'm going to start reading James Carville's book, too. And we're going to go back and forth between the two. Chapter by chapter, until they're both done. And, uh... I may not survive it, but um, it's worth a try. So thank you very much for, for listening to this. If you made it this far, I have no idea if this is... I hope this is entertaining. I think it is. But um, it's fun for me. And I, again, I really appreciate that you're here. I really appreciate that everybody has uh, taken the time to subscribe and to listen to what I have to say. It, it really does make me feel great. So it's a harsh world out there, my friends. Keep thinking.